crystal order. The next number in the agenda is a panel discussion about best practices in developing a values-based business curriculum, which uh, resists and follows from the plenary uh, presentation of Father Fernando. We now would like to call on the speakers, on the panelists, who will be speaking uh, in order of my um, uh, presentation. First, we will have uh, Dr. James Stoller, representing uh, Dr. John College, Dr. James Stoller, and Dr. Frank Werner of the Graduate School of Business, Fort Ham University. Then we shall have Professor Parisa Agerian, Associate Professor, Faculty of Liberal Arts of Sophia University in Japan. And then we will have Dr. Perry De Vanessa, head of the Department of Social Dynamics in St. Joseph's College in Tamil Nadu, India. And finally, we will have Father Alex Eka from the Society of Jesus, Savior Institute of Social Service in India. We shall begin with Dr. James Stoller. That's amazing. The first time I've ever been in a place I couldn't hear me without a microphone. Uh, I have 15 minutes, is that right? Okay, I need somebody in the audience to go, as a watch, to go bong after 5 minutes, bong after 10, and bong at the end of 15. Can you do that? Every 5 minutes. Every 5 minutes. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, the session is uh, Integrating Sustainability in the Collective Mission of Jesuit Business Schools, and I'm here on behalf of Tim Keene, John Holwitz and Frank Warner, all of whom cannot be here except for me for reasons related to climate change, global sustainability, or prime, or all three. Uh, Tim can't, well, let's see, starting with John Holwitz, my good friend, uh, he can't be here because one of the storms that we're getting as a result of climate change dropped a tree on his house. And he's been uh, constantly with the insurance people fixing his house. Uh, Frank can't do it because he's teaching, can't be here. He was at the John Shapur last year. Uh, he can't be here because he's teaching, of course, in uh, global sustainability and corporate finance. The third one we've done, we did two seminars together, and he's doing this one alone. And Tim Keene is the happiest story because he can't be here because he is um, in a very formative stage of spending $4 million in the next five years that came about, he's, he's pretty strong about it, because of his, his school's commitment to Prime. He made an early commitment to Prime that led to a series of steps and it ended up with his getting $5 million for the institute, the school, uh, St. Louis University, getting $5 million to set up a sustainability MBA type program. Uh, one million is endowment, so he doesn't have to spend that in the next five years, but he's got to spend four million dollars in the next five years, which is not such a bad thing to have to do, I think. Uh, we had a bunch of topics we could have talked about. Uh, there's a 2009 survey of the United States IHABS member schools, their interests in sustainability, their perceptions, the actions they're taking, and their desires for what AIHAA. Too loud? What I told you I should do without this. <laughs> what the IHABS might do to help them out. We did a preliminary report on that last year, and I can talk more about that over coffee. Uh, but and I'll refer a slightly to it. Um, the second topic uh, could be the report of the Sustainability Task Force that was commissioned at John Shapur and that Tim Keene and I co-led with a bunch of folks I'll mention who they were shortly. We could talk about the prime IHABS relationship, but that's already been, I think, very well started and will continue to go with the manual session this morning. And I can tell you more about uh, that wonderful success story that Tim, that Tim Keene had, and I'll have to do that over coffee. Because I can only do one in the 15 minutes, and the winner is the report of the Sustainability Task Force that was commissioned at John's report last year. That's what I'll spend my time on. 
I'm going to give you the summary of what the task force came up with uh, verbally, and after all the speakers have finished speaking, they will, folks will hand out a one-page sheet of paper, which is what I've already talked about. But I don't want to have it in front of you because it will distract what I'm saying, etc. Uh, that's okay. The, um, I'll talk about the objective of the task force that was commissioned at, uh, at John Shabur, the process that went through. The deliverable is a definition of global sustainability or sustainable development that was agreed upon by the task force members uh, and recommendations from it, all on one page. Um, I, it was shared at um, Marquette uh, just a couple weeks ago with the colleagues in Jesuit Business Education, which is another really wonderful bunch of folks to be with, like, like you all. And um, now we're sharing it at today. I know it pretty well. The task force has done its job. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about next steps. By the way, I feel so much at home with you all that I didn't say how honored I am to be here and what a great pleasure it is to be. But you all make me feel so much at home that I forget the formalities of saying thank you. But I really do. I've enjoyed all the sessions I've been to with CJBE, the colleagues of Jesuit Business Education, and, and at the International Association of Jesuit Business Schools, and I feel just a, you know, you're a great folks to be with. I feel very, very welcomed by you, so thank you for making me feel that way. The uh, personal note about this task force, first of all, first of all, thank you. It was simply fun. Uh, working with this group, with Tim Keyes, co-leadership of it, and the folks we worked with, uh, it wasn't a, it wasn't a big burden. Uh, it was great fun to, to work with them, and I have a great deal of gratitude for the people I work with, uh, particularly uh, Greg, who set up, up this task force and, and staff, of course. So, look, what are we having here? Uh, ooh, that's interesting. I'm using Tim's slides, and they're surprising me a little bit. I ended them this morning at about 3 a.m. Uh, uh, so I'm going to go through the, uh, the objective was to form a task force, make the recommendation, um, and recommend a strategic approach, a recommendation on definition, a recommended definition, and a strategic approach for IAGPS members. Uh, and the very first thing we did was uh, have that task force assembled across the world, and I'll give you the membership of the task force right now, but I wanted to thank Greg for doing such a great job setting it up. It was a, just, he got the folks and everything, uh, including uh, getting Tim as a co-leader of it. Tim was a wonderful guy to work with. The folks uh, came from Mexico, Peru, Uruguay, India, the Philippines, Indonesia, Spain, Belgium, Lebanon, Uganda, uh, U.S. and Missouri, U.S. New York, U.S. California, U.S. Michigan. And uh, let's see, Rudy's here. Where's Rudy? You were on the task force. Uh, well, I guess you knew what I was going to say. And um, uh, Sebastian, where are you? You're on the task force. Uh, there we go. Thank you. Anybody else uh, just up here is on the task force? Uh, don't see anybody else in the room. And we, basically, we worked uh, by uh, eight virtual meetings over 12 months on the telephone. Uh, and uh, we evolved a shared understanding that we thought would be appropriate for the IHABS members. We reached consensus at the end of the uh, conversations on the phone. We solicited feedback along the way, including the, uh, the uh, investment research group of the uh, National Jesuit uh, Committee for Investment uh, uh, Responsibility. 